some of the turmoil going on in around the world. And people have called this the fourth turning. This is the simultaneous kind of a cyclical nature happening on multiple levels where you find the end of multi hundred year, multi thousand year cycles. BlackRock is a useful idiot, right? Because they've got a, a lot of money and they're going to buy a lot of Bitcoin. And so for 12 years, we have front run BlackRock. What's going to help us to be more informed so we can be better investors in the future. This is the, really the first time, again, another first in history where the the average person got in there a decade before Wall Street did. Today, Bitcoin maximalist Max Kaiser reveals his price forecast for Bitcoin and offers insights into the near future. Kaiser highlights the pivotal role of BlackRock in 2024, surpassing the influence of any other institutional investor. Despite this, he maintains an optimistic stance on Bitcoin's price. Kaiser dives into why this period is unprecedented in history, discussing the global collapse of the fiat money system. He asserts that Bitcoin will emerge as a true form of currency, resistant to inflation and government interference. Join us as we explore Kaiser's latest interview, where he unveils his Bitcoin prediction and explains why a $400,000 price may materialize sooner than expected. In the case of the United States, which has the US dollar and world reserve currency, they're going to reach this place at a different pace than other countries. Uh, countries that where you have hyperinflation like Venezuela or Argentina, or Zimbabwe and these other countries, they're obviously poised to more rapidly embrace Bitcoin as a way to save their economies. So what we're seeing now is depending on where you come from, it will depend on how quickly you adapt to Bitcoin as world reserve currency. But that is the end game. That's where we're all going. Yeah, I guess to look at this uh, from the perspective of 300 years of an experiment with fiat money, which started with the Bank of England back in 1694, 1696 period. And um, then in 1971, we had an, another um, chapter in that experiment where the entire world went entirely on a fiat money standard without any currency backed by anything other than other fiat money. And so now this is ending, this 300 year period is ending. And it's, we're heading into the Bitcoin standard era where you have Bitcoin becomes the global reserve. And so different countries are reacting to this in different ways. Well, uh, one of the interesting attributes of Bitcoin is that for the first time in history, it separates money from the state or it separates money from any centralized control whatsoever. So money becomes something entirely different than we've been used to in our entire history as humans on this planet. Most of the time we have two problems with money. One is con concentration of power or concentration of wealth because money throughout history has been pretty much what's called proof of stake. If I have a lot of money, I have influence and I can change laws to make it easier for me to get more money. It's corruption and it's because of the nature of the money that we've had for millennia. And the same applies to gold, by the way. But with Bitcoin, it's a system called proof of work. It's not proof of stake. And no matter how many Bitcoin anybody has or any organization has, they have no influence at all to change the protocol. So it's very egalitarian in that sense. And it also for the first time is a savings technology, which has a huge impact on folks. It's the first time in history that anybody on any budget can store their wealth and it can be unconfiscatable. And the price of protecting that wealth is virtually zero. If you look at how wealth is aggregated today, usually those with a lot of wealth spend a lot of money protecting that wealth. They buy, they have security guards, they have vaults, they have a lot of lawyers, they have a lot of accountants. There's a lot of politicians, right? There's a huge cost to protecting and maintaining that wealth. Well, with Bitcoin, you don't, you don't need any of that. You just have to keep memorize your seed phrase. That's it. And that's available to anybody. So the person who's, let's say, you know, an artist who sells art, they make, let's say, 20% of the the nominal uh, per capita income in a country or 50% of it, the, the capita income, but they're happy to do that because they just want to be artists. They don't want to be 
grinding it out as a lawyer, perhaps, but they they can put their savings into Bitcoin and it's inflation proof. So their purchasing power will always go up. The purchasing power will mathematically continue to go up forever and they can be free to express who they are. And I think that's part of this renaissance uh, 2.0 is that it frees up self-expression in a way that we haven't seen since the Enlightenment, since we haven't seen since the Renaissance. And that's totally enabled because of the savings technology, this unconfiscatable separation of money and state called Bitcoin. Whether this introduces another cycle, um, I think that I'm sure it does, but I think that the nature of this cycle is is quite uh, interesting in a number of different ways. Right, well, clearly CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, are on the other side of the, of the fight toward so individual sovereignty and, and freedom. Because CBDCs yeah. are highly centralized, highly controlled. It's, it's fiat money, everything you hate about fiat money, but much worse. And so that, that's clearly on the, the battle is it will be fought against uh, central bank digital currencies. And I think that what we can look for and what we can be helpful about is that the battle is going to be all about energy and energy use. And Bitcoin uses a lot of energy. We know this. And so do CBDCs. So do the, the so does the military. Uh, use a lot of energy. So does AI, artificial intelligence, use a lot of energy. And we want most of the energy or all of the energy, we want it to be hashing Bitcoin. And uh, the good news is if you look at the amount of energy that Bitcoin uses, what's called the hash rate, it's absolutely skyrocketing. And it's never been in the bear market, really. It's been going up for 12, 13 years. But with the Bitcoin price, because it's this new asset class that ultimately competes with gold, that means it's going to go from just under a trillion dollar market cap to $10 trillion market cap. You're talking about an asset could easily go to 400,000 in a relatively short period of time. So you don't want to be the guy in the cartel who's short Bitcoin when it's about to make a 10 X move. So it's very difficult to maintain that cartel in a Bitcoin scenario because it's got that huge upside potential yet and it also because it's redefining money as we know it and so it's going to attract by the nature of this com new digital synthetic commodity buyers um, are going to essentially rule price discovery it's going to be very difficult to keep a a, a, a sell order in this mix where you've got this upper trajectory of a new asset class where the total addressable market for Bitcoin is literally $400 trillion, which is the total market cap of all investable securities, stocks, bonds, property, all derivatives, all, all these things taken in an aggregate is at $400 trillion. So, and, and that is potentially the total market addressable market for Bitcoin. It can dis, it can demonetize. I think it's already demonetizing gold, just like gold demonetized silver. It'll demonetize the property market. It'll demonetize the bond market. The bond market's a $200 trillion market. Bitcoin's not even at a 1 trillion. That's a 200 X right there. So to get back to the price suppression, of course, there will be a lot of price discovery games being played with a lot of derivatives, but ultimately, unlike gold, uh, it'll have this natural upward bias. The second thing is that gold is is very difficult and nobody really wants to stand for delivery of gold. Yes. So when you're in the gold business, you know, it's all paper settled and it's all cash settled. And people rarely would say, you know, I've got um, a, you know, a ton of gold in the market I'm bidding for. I'm going to take delivery of it. I'm not going to, the gold, you've got to ship it. You've got to insure it. You've got to store it. Right, moving gold around is very difficult, shipping it and storing it. With Bitcoin, because you don't have any of that cost whatsoever and you control the private key, any laddered manipulative price discovery edifice can be quickly destroyed by pulling your private key because it's the base level of any manipulative scheme, any Ponzi scheme would have, if it, you can pull it, you know, the whole thing